Morning, everybody. How's it going? Thought I'd uh, try my hand at a video on dubbing brushes. Uh, so let's get started. Um, what is a dubbing brush? Okay, a dubbing brush. Why do they call it that? Is it a just a bunch of dubbing? No, not necessarily. Um, here's some dubbing brushes I've been working on, and it has three materials in it, so I guess we're going to call it a dubbing brush because everybody calls them dubbing brushes, but really it's a composite brush. And usually when we hear the word brush, it has to do with wire. There's, it's, um, in, in the world of, uh, fly tying lingo, you have a dubbing brush, you have a composite loop, and you have a dubbing loop. Okay, so let's talk about that for a minute. The dubbing loop, done while tying a fly, with thread and dubbing. And a composite loop. What is a composite loop? A composite loop. Root word being compose. So composed of multiple materials while tying a fly and using thread. Composite loop. Okay. Now when we come to the dubbing brush, um, Enrico Pluglisi, or whatever the heck that guy's name is, he really made those famous. But to be quite honest with you, I don't dig paying fifteen dollars um, a brush for for that. Okay, uh, let me show you one. I've got them; they're nice. Right here. Fifteen bucks, baby. I'd rather make my own. Okay. So, uh, let me give you a little history about how I got started with this. Um, I started uh, following uh, Gunnar Brammer. And let me tell you something about that young man. <clears throat> I'm 55 years old, and I don't know how old he is. He's 25, 20. Young buck. Okay. That kid's got his stuff together big time and uh so i started following him and in order to um pick up on some of the work he was doing he was building his own brushes well he he made a video on on how to do that he you may want to go look at uh gunner brammer's video video on it as well <sighs> coffee's good today coffee's good every day so uh when he did his video, I was like, okay, well, i got to have one of those machines. So I bought this uh, Stefano uh, dubbing brush machine, and it requires that you use a uh, one of your old vices you got sticking around, and it's got a little ball bearing spinner here that spins, and then it has a table that you lay your materials out on, and then it has this end deal that, uh, you know, has a spring on it that, uh, you know, you can compress your wire so it doesn't snap and whole nine yards we're going to get into all that uh how to how to tie one but i just want i want you to understand the basics here and it's a little bit confusing in the beginning i was like okay dubbing brush well is it just dubbing and wire or what is this and so um the terminologies can be so um confusing sometimes so in my world <clears throat> a dubbing brush and a composite brush are basically the same thing. Um, we hear that terminology, dubbing brush, much more than we hear composite brush. To me, it's a composite brush because it's composed of multiple things. If it's a dubbing brush, it has just dubbing in it. That's all it is. So um, I have no use to use just dubbing really in, uh, in wire. I would do it in a um, dubbing loop while tying a fly, but not necessarily in making of composite brushes. 
All right, so let me show you a few of the brushes uh, I was working on yesterday. I work for uh, Flint Pierce, who is the owner of uh, BattleBaits.com, and I am tying his, um, if you go to his website, BattleBaits.com, I'm tying all the hair jigs that are on there, okay? And then uh, he's got a couple thousand followers, maybe more. And um, so he does a pretty good amount of business. And I'm having to uh, tie quite a few of the hair jigs for him. So I have to have a, a pretty good amount of brushes on hand if orders come in. I try and keep the inventory um, up. It's a little down at this time, but... Um, I need like four or five, six, seven different uh, brushes that I use in tying that particular jig. So uh, not only was it awesome that uh, I got the dubbing brush machine to be able to do my own brushes to tie streamers like Gunner's doing. Um, you know, the big, let me show you one. <clears throat> This, this is Scott Crosby's favorite fly in the whole world. Look at that bad boy. <laughs> yeah. Right on. Gunner Brammer special. I'm here to tell you, folks. It's worth every penny. And I paid 30 bucks for it. Yep, 30 bucks. And I'd do it again in a heartbeat. This thing is articulated. It has a big A-Rax hooks on it. It's, I mean, it is every aspect of any kind of human thinking can be applied to making this thing the greatest it is is in it that's what makes gunner so sharp he's attention to detail freak kind of like me all right so anyway to be able to do flies like this and you can uh incorporate these brushes into just about you know, all your streamer flies for sure. And how about intruders or, you know, whatever steelhead fly you think you'd like to tie on a shank, you can use the wire. Um, another uh, great thing about a, a brush is this. Not necessarily do I have to use this. Um, this is stainless steel wire that we have on a bobbin here. Um, it's... Um, 0 0.006 in thickness and uh so it's not necessarily the it's not very thick and um but you don't have to what i'm trying to get to is you don't have to um cut a chunk of this off and wrap the wire onto your fly and utilize it that way if you are a composite brush freak like i am or composite loop freak like i am pardon me not brush loop uh, I can open this up after this has been made, and I can literally take my scissors and cut a chunk off of that to, to utilize on my Jerry French composite loop card when I'm building them. Now you don't have to use the card. I understand that. I know that. I made my own. I Now I use a bare table most of the time. But those cards are cool for guys who are just getting started, who don't understand the layout and the proportions and such so um it's pretty cool so every brush that you make has two purposes one it could be used by wrapping the wire on a fly to create a shoulder or whatever you want it to do um and also you can cut materials completely right off it and use it in a threaded composite loop while tying the fly all right now sit on that so, <clears throat> there are a bunch of different materials that a person can use when it comes to this. Now, you can use natural materials, hair and feathers and such. That would work, okay? It's become my kind of understanding, um, the way I look at it is, if we're using synthetic materials the water will be shed from your fly and not soaked up into your fly, okay? And if water is soaked up into your fly, guess what happens? Now it's heavy, okay? And if you're like me, I'm a rookie beginner spaycaster on a heavy fly, 
I have much difficulty trying to get any kind of length out of my cast when I'm casting that. And the synthetic materials shed the water, therefore the fly is lighter, and when it hits the water, it's pretty much in the um, untrapped, undulating position that creates action, which is a trigger. And I talked about this last night on my Dirty Ho video that, you know, when a, when a, when materials are not trapped, they move better. And when they move better, that movement creates action, which is the trigger itself that could potentially cause you to get a few more bites in a day than the next guy who's just using a bulked up, trapped material to fly. Okay? So, some of these synthetic materials I've been using are coming from Fly Tires Dungeon. Not all, but a lot of them, most of them. I've um, had a great opportunity to speak with the owner, Doug Brewer, um, at the Albany uh, Fly Time Show. Pardon me while I get a drink of coffee. A very nice man. He understands the little guy, okay? I consider myself to be the little guy. I, I don't make a ton of money. I don't have a lot of money to just go buy materials every chance I get. I basically have to earn the money I need to get materials that I want. Um, and I don't, you know, I wish it was different. I wish I could just drop the credit card anytime I want, but I can't. And because I'm the little man, I'm always looking for the best deal. Let me tell you, Fly Tires Dungeon, you will not find a better price in my opinion. I don't, I don't think you can find it out there. Those guys are awesome. All right, let's talk about some of their materials that we're using in the, uh, I'm calling it composite brush. I'm not calling it a dubby brush. The composite brushes that I'm tying uh, for battle baits have three materials in them. The first base material that we lay down is Congo hair, okay? Congo hair. <clears throat> There's all kinds of cool different colors. This one is uh, ro uh, royal blue, I think it is, uh, dark brown. Um, this one's called bait fish. It's kind of like a, I don't know if you can see that. It's like a combination of some cool natural colors and then purple. There's, I mean, the sky's the limit on the colors. This is the base that you lay down on the table to put other things with it. But this is, um, oh, I don't know. Gunner does such a great... Um, job uh, gunner brammer he's my hero that kid um he's my mentor he does such a great job um explaining the materials i don't think this is s crinkle fiber but it's i don't i don't want to say that, that it's um super it's kind of coarse a little bit coarse which gives it a little bit of a shoulder which is good but the nice thing about fly tires dungeon is they have some other materials that um, if you don't like the coarseness of this one, well, maybe you'll like the coarseness of their new material. This next one I'm going to show you. I've been tying some brushes up with this one. This is called Water Silk. It's much thinner, and it's not as coarse. Um, I really like the Water Silk. Um, I did these orange brushes. Here are in the Water Silk. I'm going to be um, first time trying those in my jigs um, coming up soon. Okay, so water silk, that's a good one. I like that. And um, now, once you get the either the water silk or the Congo hair laid down onto the table, what we're gonna do then is we're gonna we're gonna add some materials to give it some some uh, to complement it to give it some uh, accent. Okay, um, highlights, if you will. One of the other materials that I like to use. And add to the other, um, to the Congo hair or the water silk is, um, this is called Crystal Web. And it's kind of like hair, but it's kind of like Crystal Flash a little bit, but it's not really Crystal Flash. But, um, this is good to add to the brush for some color and accents. Another material that is good for that is another one from Fly Tires Dungeon called Northern Lights. Okay, Northern Lights. This one is cool. This is gold. 
This is like a purple rainbow. Then we have like a like a kingfisher blue. Um, this one's called turquoise and hot white actually. Um, then this one is uh, Aurora gold. This is pretty cool too. All right, so there's some more accent ones. The one I use a lot in my battle bait um, brushes is this next one I'm going to show you. Pearl Web. Now this one is really bulky and it's, um, I just love the colors. Um, all the colors are good, you know. I am I like variety of color. I'm a big fluorescent guy. I love the fluorescence. I always, always have my whole entire life. Um, purple, hot white, hot pink, hot chartreuse, olive. Um, this is another one we add accents to. I usually do um, this next one I'm about to show you last, which is not a Fly Tires Dungeon product, but rather a hairline product. And it's my it's my favorite product. It, it's my the newest product I like the most. Okay. And I use it in a lot of different applications, not just in my brushes. I use it in my composite loops for my intruders and whatever other, you know, flies I'm tying, the dirty hoe and um, the uh, ultra squid and all that. In my freestyling, whatever it may be. <clears throat> okay. That material is ripple ice fiber. Okay, this one's pearl green hue. This one is <clears throat> blue UV. This one is chartreuse. This one is fluorescent yellow. They have pink. They have. There's a bunch of different colors. They're really cool. But when you pull this out of the package, I don't know if I can get it close enough to the camera for you to see it. But it's got this like weird, almost like snaky s look to it that when you lay that into the um dubbing brush and the light hits it on different angles once you've got it tied into either a composite loop or a composite brush it is it's fantastic i really like it it really looks good ripple ice fiber fly shop owners if you're watching this and you don't have this in your shop you're making a big mistake because this is going to sell like wildfire. I even talked to Doug Brewer at um, Fly Tires Dungeon and I gave him a sample of the Ripple Ice Fiber because he makes all his own stuff. They call him the mad scientist. And I told him, I said, Doug, you, you should probably get yourself into the ball game of something close to this because this is really good stuff. Okay, I think I've said that enough now. All right. You want to tie one up? Let's let's just spin one up real quick. I've got to do. I've got blue sitting here ready to go. Um, let me get some of this stuff out of the way. I was just throwing around. I'm off today. Off tomorrow. Gonna be making videos probably all day today and all day tomorrow. Stand by for my latest video which is going to be uh or the next video which is we're going to do composite loops we're going to get off we're going to delve off into that composite loops 101 all right i need a wire <clears throat> and the three materials we're going to be using are royal blue congo hair hot white pearl web and ripple ice fiber UV pearl. Okay? Very simple. What we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we are going to take about, oh, oh my bobbin's a little goofy. Um, take about maybe a half an inch. I'm going to switch my glasses here. Where's my other glasses? Oh no, here we are. <clears throat> oh, I can see. Yay! Take about a half an inch, or no, an inch or so. And um, wrap it around that uh, hook and pinch it with your fingers and spin it. Okay? Then I like to come in and give it a little tug and make sure it's all snug on there. And it ain't going anywhere. Okay? Once again, this is stainless steel wire purchased from Hairline 0 0.006. 
come down to the other end. Now, on your dubbing brush machine, inside here is this um, set screw. And you have to come in and line up your little hook and totally set this screw in so it can't move in the building process. We'll get to why that is later here in a minute. And it ain't going anywhere now. This cannot compress. This spring cannot compress. All right. Come back up here. Grab your wire. Give it some tension. Not a lot. You don't want to break it, of course. But you want to give it a lot of tension. And spin it around that hook. I like three times. And then back around the back and hang it off the front for right now. So, now it's time to move the table up into... The table's got to be moved up into position where... On the table, you can't see it, but there's a groove right down the center, okay? And I'm going to move that table up into where the wire is sitting in that groove, okay? Now, before you do that, though, just like the composite loop that we tie on the flies with thread, the same thing applies for wire. Wax is key. All right, so wax it the length of the table. Don't want to get too much past the ends of the table. Because it's just unwanted wax and it gets in the way and it's yucky. Okay, so we waxed it. We're going to move the table up into position. Okay. Make sure that wire is down in there. And I like to lift it up a little bit and give it some pressure. Okay. Then I'm going to set the set screw down here in the middle. There's a set screw right there. And now I'm going to come in and I'm going to take my blue Congo hair and I'm going to measure up the width of the table. Okay, there is the width of the table. So I take my good hair scissors, nice and sharp, cut that down. And what I like to do is, you can't see it, but I'm laying it down on the table here and I'm going to lay this longer piece right next to it and I'm going to cut I'm going to cut a bunch of them all ready to go in the same length. Okay. Oop. Now I have a bunch that are all in the same length. And I'm going to take that and pick it up. And you could take, if you wanted to, and individually lay it on the table like this but when I have a nice big clump like this I found it to be a little bit more handy to do this I'm just going to just like you would a composite loop when you want to open it up you're just gonna manipulate it with your your thumb and your fingers and I, I found if you just do what you see me doing here by opening this now once you get it open like maybe three inches I like to lay it right down on the table and you're trying to keep everything perpendicular to the table, not turned or canted or crossed on top of each other. And we're just going to start to open that up even further and try and get it to be, I don't know, I usually use three of those chunks. So this is about a foot long, so, so maybe four inches or so. This one's all spread out. Come and grab my other one that I just cut. Grab it. Open it up, manipulate it enough to where I can lay it on the table. And open it up. And it looks like, according to how many, how big a round you cut that, you could use three or two. It looks like this one's only going to require me using two because I had a little bit bigger a round chunk that I cut from my hank. Okay. That hank is, this is the end of one. I'm, all right, now, <clears throat> grab your hot white pearl. And I've got a big chunk here cut the same size as the table and the same size as the blue Congo hair. And I'm just going to come and grab four or five, six pieces and put it on there. Now, I noticed yesterday if I pinch my fingers and leave them pinched and lay it down, they all stay in a little pile. I don't want it to stay in a little pile. I want it to spread out. So what I started doing was when I go to lay it down, I spin my I spin my fingers where, where I'm pinching. I, I, I kind of throw it. Okay. You'll have to work on this on your own and get your own technique. But you're trying to 
four or five pieces and all spread out all the way down through here. Now, I, you know, some people say, well, too much flash is no good and not enough flash is no good. And you have these, these uh, um, proportions that you're using, you have to come up with what you like, what you think, and experiment. Sometimes you may have some brushes with less accent and not as much flash, and you may have some that are just like, are you kidding me? It's nothing but flash. So these are important things to remember. All right, now, my favorite, Ripple Ice Fiber. I know you have probably tired of me saying that in this video, but this is some cool stuff, man. All right. Same thing. Pinch it out the top, lay it on the top. Pinch it, lay. Pinch it, lay. Pinch it, lay. Pinch it, lay. Now, before I continue, I'm looking for bare spots right now to make sure everything e equal and even. It looks good. Now we're going to come in here and take our wire and lift it up. Because we're going to go right back over to the other side. Now get the edge of the table. You don't want wire. You don't want wax on the wire outside of the table. So I lift it up on an angle and I go like this and put that wax on there until I get to the other end of the table and I drop her down and now I'm ready. Now you can't have too much wire out because it's hard to wrap it here at the hook. So what I'm going to do is I like to take the bobbin and put it in the the um, trench or the uh, groove at the other end and I'll s keeping tension on it okay while it's in the bobbin and it's a really good idea uh, Gunner taught me to keep these in a bobbin don't try and do it without a bobbin it'll you'll drive yourself nuts okay so I lay it in the groove and I get it down to this hook and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna wrap it and then what I'm gonna do now is I'm just holding pressure on it and I'm going to spin it the spinner towards me towards me towards me towards me until that piece of wire is wrapped up to the edge of the table and then I'm gonna reach in here with my junky old nasty yucky scissors that cut wire only snip it out of there okay now this baby's ready to spin okay so how we're we gonna do that <clears throat> get a few tools I need here around Should have had those ready. Okay. <clears throat> now I'm going to drop the table. When I drop the table, you're going to see that all the material are is sandwiched between the wire. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to spin it lightly about that much. Don't spin it too much right here because you don't want to get too tight because you've got to tidy up these ends, okay? See how I'm just taking that end and I'm making it sure it doesn't get wrapped up into all this other wire it doesn't need to be. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other end, okay? Makes it for a nice end and a nice end. Now, before I continue here, I'm going to do my first real light brush out. Don't do a bunch of heavy brushing right here. This is just to kind of get it so that you can spin it more and give it a mo more tension because you're about to go nuts on it with the cat comb. I had a little extra. Look what I did. I pulled out a chunk I didn't want to because I had extra wax on there. So extra wax can cause some issues. It stuck to my thumb and I didn't want that to come out of there, but it did. So anyway, I got to get that off my thumb. Get off. Spin it some more right now. Hard. Okay. Now you can't see the leg. This leg right here, it's sitting on the table right now. And as I spin, it's starting to rise up off the table. I call it popping a wheelie. Okay. Before I continue to pop my wheelie and get it off about maybe a half an inch off the table, I'm going to come in here and I'll, right now I'm going to start to really use the cat comb. Okay. And um, pick, you know, and brush this all out really good. You're going to dig right in there on the wire. You don't want anything trapped. Nothing trapped. Okay. Now I'm going to spin it even harder and pop my wheelie really good. There's three-eighths of an inch. There's pretty good. Oh, yeah, right on. I'm thinking that's pretty good right there. Let's see. Yeah, looking good. You can tell when your brush is um, 
got everything out because it just starts to not really you can you can feel it you can hear it when it's grabbing which is good you want it to grab and remember you're going to brush both directions up and down but you're also brushing the material out on each side and that creates a very nice um, round cylindrical looking brush it's not just flat on one side and flat on the other okay come in here and do this get her all good to go now when you have the this leg is popping a wheelie at a half an inch you're going to come in here with your allen tool and unloosen that set screw that we tightened in the very beginning okay when i unloosen that what i'm doing is i'm now on to the spring and i'm going to take and spin this until i have a little red mark at about halfway um that i'm going to keep spinning until that red mark is exposed that red mark is about right there okay watch the spring compress as i uh, spin this see it compressing okay before you go any further and try and expose the red mark we're looking for you don't want to um, spin this up so tight that you can't unbrush it so you got to kind of brush along the way so that you're not trapping any material can't trap material no way Jose. Okay, I still don't see my red mark, so I'm going to continue. There's the red mark. We're good. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it the one last brushing. I'm going to make sure it's all brushed out the way I want it. And I am not being nice to this at all. If it breaks, it breaks. But for the most part, they don't break. Now you're going to take your yucky scissors and you're going to let go of this. Just totally let go of it. And when it quits spinning... Brush her out, make sure it's good, and now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put my finger, I'm gonna, this is um, taking care of your equipment so it doesn't bang around, I'm going to put my finger on the back side of the spring and cut that wire right off there and loosely let it go. If I cut that, it's just going to slam back and you don't want, you know, it's just not good for your stuff that you're trying to take care of. Come in here and take this off. There you go, folks. A composite brush three different materials okay for time's sake I want to end this video and we're gonna come back uh, and do a video on composite loops after I eat my breakfast with my wonderful wife Heidi okay hope you learned something here today about composite brushes and we'll talk to you later thanks for tuning in